Now let us look at top composition, feed composition and bottom composition. There is certain rule there, okay. they should uh, follow certain rule which is called the lever rule. Okay. What is that? Look at these equations. I have a material balance equation for every species. This equation should be satisfied. This is for species 1 or A. This is this is for species 2 or B. See distillate bottom feed, right? Distillate bottom feed. And then this is nothing but overall balance. Now you have these three equations. I play with these three equations, I convert them to this particular form. What is this form? It tells me, okay, tells me that when you plot these compositions xd, xf and xb on a ternary diagram, the slope of this line, the slope of this slope of this line, okay is equal to the slope of this line. This is the slope of this line. This is the slope of this line. Okay. If the slopes are equal, then these three points are collinear. These three points are collinear. It is lever rule. So, in nutshell, distillation column, you have feed coming in, distillate going out, bottom going out. These three compositions, if I plot them, on a ternary diagram, right, they should be on the straight line. Okay. Always remember this rule. Okay. When you are going to construct the diagrams later, sometimes quite likely that you will forget this rule and then you will get, end up getting a wrong sequence. Right. This is very important that my xd, xf and xb are on the same line. Right. So, this is one possibility where, where my xd is here, right? my xf is here, xb has to be here. right? Can we have xb here? Now, if you just go by boiling points, I say okay, my top composition should be the most volatile component, right? that means somewhere here. My bottom composition would be the least volatile component that is here. Okay. Is it correct? Where, where, where will B go then? In a ternary system, okay, in a ternary system, if you have a continuous distillation, I cannot say that I will get top, at the top pure A and I will get at the bottom pure C at a time. If Is it possible? It is not possible because you have an intermediate component in the feed, it has to go somewhere. right? So, at a time, I can separate only one component in pure form like what I showed you just now. right? So, you get either pure A or you get either pure C. right? Now, let us look at these profiles or trajectories, how they behave. Again, we will go back to McCarthy's method. You have the equilibrium curve, right? And you start with XD, okay? Like in the triangle for a ternary system, I am going to start with this XD. So, here in binary, I am just looking at a similarity, I am trying to work out analogy between these two. This is your XD here for a ternary system. In binary system, this is your XD, right? Now, when I solve the equation for the rectifying section line, I get this, right? Okay. So, which are the composition I am going to get? This is the first composition, right? The equilibrium stage composition. Then the second would be this, right? Third would be this, okay? And then Right, a point will come where my movement is restricted. I am not able to move. What is this point? This point is the intersection of rectifying section line and the vapor liquid equilibrium curve. Okay. If I just go on doing the calculations, 
right? I will reach a stage where the further movement is not possible. I realize a pinch, okay? a fixed point. Right? That is where the vapor liquid equilibrium curve and the material balance line they will intersect. The further movement is not possible, further change in composition is not possible. Right? No driving force, okay? you are on the equilibrium line. Right? Same behavior will be observed here, okay? but since I am not seeing the vapor liquid equilibrium curve, it is not possible to visualize the vapor liquid equilibrium curve. I am not seeing the vapor compositions, I will realize it in a different way. Let us see, okay. you go on doing these calculations, I plot these points, okay. I am plotting x a versus x b, so there are corresponding y values, okay. right. I go on doing this, a stage will come where you will not be able to move. Okay. What does it mean? That means you got something similar to this. That is where all these equations of vapor liquid equilibrium curve and the material balance line are satisfied. Okay. You are on the equilibrium composition, equilibrium surface I would say. Right. So, further movement is restricted. This point is a pinch, typically called as feed pinch. Right? Okay. We do not need to really define it in the case of my capital method, but it has a significance when you go to multi component system. Right? So, this is nothing but a feed pinch. Right? You have one feed pinch for rectifying section, similarly you will get another feed pinch for stripping sections like this. You have x b right? and you may have made draw a line, right? this is one point, another point, another point and further, further movement is restricted. So, you will just hit the vapor liquid equilibrium curve. Similarly, if you do these calculations here, you go this way right? and you will stop there, okay? you will not be able to move ahead. You can do this calculation and on your own you will realize that. Okay? What does it mean? It means that now further movement is not possible because you are on the equilibrium surface as I said before, no driving force for mass transfer. right? So, you get a feed pinch. Right? So, you have feed pinch for rectifying section, you have feed pinch for stripping section. Is that clear? It is quite similar to what we see in McAfee. Okay? Basically, it is just, just an interplay of vapor liquid equilibrium curve and material balance line. We, we get intersection here, that is why the further movement is restricted. Similarly, I am not able to see the intersection here because of the dimensionality of the system, but then definitely all those equations are satisfied okay? right? and that is the reason further movement is not possible. Now, which are all these equations? Now, in this case, which are the equations? For this particular point, I have my y is equal to alpha x upon 1 plus alpha minus 1 x. Right? for A rather, okay. more volatile component and which is the other equation? Intersection of vapor liquid equilibrium curve and material balance line. right? So, which is that other equation? Y A okay, equal to R upon R plus 1 x a plus x d by r plus 1. Why I am not writing n there? Because n has no meaning. right? N, even if I change n, does not matter. right? n is going to infinity and I am getting this particular point. So, if you want to get this point without actually solving the equation step by step, without doing this exercise, 
if you want to get this point I can solve these two equations together right simultaneously if I solve this equation I will locate this point I do not need to do this exercise right what about this point this point again you have the vapor liquid equilibrium equation right but now you have two equations like this for A and B right and then material balance equation again two equations. So, binary system you need to solve these two equations but for ternary system you need to solve four equations simultaneously right ok. So, by solving all those equations you will get this point right because there are so, so many equations then these are all non-linear algebraic equations you will get multiple roots you will get multiple roots one of those roots is this ok feed pinch right. So, you have something similar to what happens in McCaptill method and that is what I have shown here see this you have a profile this way and you see the points are very close here and further movement is difficult or rather impossible right. Now, this profile if you see the equation it depends on reflux ratio right. The rectifying section equation if you see it is r by r plus 1 right. What happens in McCaptill if I change the reflux ratio if I change the reflux ratio yeah the feed pinch shifts right ok. Same thing I am going to see here. See the feed pinch has shifted, it has gone ahead. If I increase the reflux ratio, if I increase the reflux ratio, the feed pinch has gone ahead. My composition profile is traveling maximum space in the triangle. Now, can you imagine what if you have in reflux ratio infinity? Okay, what will happen? Start with this, where will it go? Where will you see the feed pinch? This pinch is moving in this direction. What is the maximum possibility rather or what is the extreme case? Again, think of McCaptill. Okay. If you increase reflux ratio, go to infinity pure C, right. So, this point this feed pinch will go here right and same is true for stripping section exactly in the opposite direction. If I go on increasing the reflux ratio, reboil ratio will also increase and my feed pinch for stripping section will move and for infinite value of reflux or reboil ratio that pinch will go to this particular point right. Okay. And that is what I have written here at feed pinch the profiles do not move ok profiles means the trajectories. This point is equivalent to point of intersection of operating line and equilibrium curve in McCaptill method right. and at infinite reflux ratio the feed pinch of rectifying section is nothing but C the least volatile component and for stripping section is nothing but point A which is the most volatile component right. Right now I am just looking at the rectifying section profile behavior and the behavior of the stripping section profile we will we'll correlate it with the column performance later ok. I am just trying to devise a method ok to find out the minimum reflux ratio ok that is what we do in McCaptill method right. So, in order to find out the minimum reflux ratio I need to know the behavior of these profiles ok. So, that behavior we are studying now ok alright. So, this is the way the rectifying section profile will behave this is the way stripping section profile will behave right and you have something called as feed pinch. So, we have defined feed pinch ok we know how to get this particular point. 
So as I said before, can we determine the feed pinch without solving the column trajectory? That means without doing that step by step calculation. I can do that, right? I can get the feed pinch without actually solving these equations by dealing with this equation and the vapor liquid equilibrium equation, right? Okay. So, this equation is for rectifying section profile, this equation is for stripping section profile. Now, I want to get a feed pinch for the rectifying section profile. I have this equation as I told you before for a terminal system, how many equations you have? You have two such equations for rectifying section, then you have the vapor liquid equilibrium equation. I just solve them simultaneously and get the solution, right? I get a solution, okay. So, that, that is your feed pinch, but as I told you, I am going to talk about it later as well that you are not going to get one solution because there are many equations they are highly non-linear so you get multiple roots okay and this is one of them the feed pinch is one of them right similarly stripping section you are going to get the feed pinch for the stripping section by solving this equation when i say solve that means direct solution i am not going to do step by step calculations starting with xd and all this equation is to be solved simultaneously with vapor liquid equilibrium equation like what I told you before for so these are these, are, these equations are solved together simultaneously to get this point directly instead of doing these calculations right. Similarly here I am going to solve these equations now there are many equations okay for binary system you have only two equations for quaternary system you have four equations right. Sorry, ternary system you have four equations. Quaternary, how many? Six. Yeah, six equations. Okay. So you can get these points directly. Okay. Feed pinches. Now, what is minimum reflux ratio? Can I get minimum reflux ratio? Look at this. This is your stripping section. This is your rectifying section. Don't forget XD, XB, and XF. I am not shown XF here. They should be on the same line, right? Because now I am talking about a column, right? The overall material balance should be satisfied. So this this is my XD, this is my XB, and there will be some XF on the line joining these two, right? Okay. Suppose I plot these profiles, I plot these profiles and if your reflux ratio is less than the minimum reflux ratio, okay, then will the profiles intersect? Profiles won't intersect, right. If the reflux ratio, see I, in order to solve this, in order to get this profile, I need a reflux ratio, I assume some value, okay. Assume some reflux ratio, right? And get this profile. And I, corresponding value of reball ratio, I plot this profile. Okay. I see this particular behavior. What is this behavior? There is no intersection. Okay. It means that your reflux ratio is less than minimum reflux ratio. Profiles are not intersecting. I am coming from top, coming from bottom. Okay but there is no intersection. So, it is not feasible, right. So, in this case there is no intersection. So, you agree that if the reflux ratio is less than the minimum reflux ratio, the two profiles that I plotted they would not intersect, okay. Operation is not feasible, right. If the reflux ratio is greater than minimum reflux ratio, I can see the profiles are intersecting, right. And there is an intermediate stage where the value of reflux ratio is such that, now this is very important, the value of reflux ratio is such that pinch, the feed pinch of one of the sections, either stripping section or rectifying section falls exactly on the other section. Now, in this case what is happening? In this case, the pinch of stripping section is falling on the rectifying section. There, there is a possibility that the pinch of rectifying section may fall exactly on the stripping section. Okay. 
getting both the pinches falling on each other is a very specific case. We will come to that later, very specific case, okay, right. What happens in McCabe theory? What is the minimum condition, minimum reflux ratio condition? Number of stages equal to at minimum reflux ratio, number of stages equal to infinity, right. See, that is what we see. At this point, you have almost infinite stages. But these two operating lines are connected to each other in the feasible composition space. If they, if they intersect outside this, then no meaning. They have to intersect in this region. This is the region, okay, feasible region. I cannot go out of this, I cannot go out of this, I cannot go here, right. So, if the profiles they intersect or trajectories they intersect here, there is no meaning. They should intersect inside. And what is the limitation? What is the point where they can just intersect and give infinite stages? Yeah, is the this is that particular point, right? And I get mini uh, for that I get infinite stages, right? I get infinite stages, right? And we have a similar behavior here for ternary system. Now, in this case, since it is a binary system. You have the feed pinch of stripping section falling on feed pinch of rectifying section. But now, since we are dealing with ternary system, okay, there is a slight difference. Okay, there is a slight difference that a feed pinch of any of the sections okay, should lie on the other profile. Okay, right? So, what is happening here? Feed pinch of the stripping section is falling on the rectifying section. How many stages you have here? In this particular situation, how many stages you need? Huh? Infinity. Why? Because you have feed pinch here, and at the feed pinch, you have no moment possible. So, stages, number of stages is almost infinity, right? Okay. So, you have minimum reflux ratio there. There is this particular arm of the rectifying section which has no significance because in the column at infinite reflux ratio, if, if you start from bottom, this is the way you will go, okay, right. You will come up to this point and then here, right. So, these compositions you will not realize them in the column at all, okay, right. So, reflux ratio equal to minimum reflux ratio. So, there are three different possibilities at reflux ratio less than minimum reflux ratio, you see this particular behavior, there is no intersection at all, the feed pinches of both the sections are far away from each other or I would say the feed pinch of stripping section is away from the rectifying section. In this case, the feed pinches are such that the intersection is possible, where the reflux ratio is greater than minimum reflux ratio. So, you have a situation where this is the exact falling of the feed pinch of stripping section on the rectifying section, right. Now, the next question is who will fall on the other profile, whether it is a uh, feed pinch of stri uh, stripping section or feed pinch of rectifying section. In this case, what I have shown is the feed pinch of stripping section is falling on rectifying section. Sometimes you may have other way around, okay, right. You may have feed pinch of rectifying section falling on stripping section, right. When does that happen? Look at this. The first case, the first case where you have as I, sh as I showed you before the feed pinch of stripping section falling on rectifying section, right. In this case, the top composition is almost pure A, okay. Look at this column. Top composition is, though I have said A here, it is close to A, okay. 
right not necessarily pure a okay when i have pure a i call this as sharp split okay but it's not necessary that it should be pure a it would be close to a right so when you are close to a you see a direct split something that i showed you before you have mixture of a b c you are separating pure a from the top b c goes down and this b c goes to another column and you have separation of b and c right okay so that's that's the sequence that i am talking about here okay and this particular split is called as direct split okay this particular split is called as direct split so what happens in direct split you have the feed pinch of stripping section falling on rectifying section right okay then the next is other way around where the feed pinch of stripping section falling on sorry the feed pinch of rectifying section falling on the stripping section where your bottom product is almost pure c so you are close to c you see these two positions and of course this would be slightly above depending on where your feed is right i can't define these two independently right these three should be on the same line this this and a feed now what do you mean is is this a feed is this a feed intersection will it give you the feed feed composition is it same as a feed composition see these two profiles they intersect that intersection is it same as a feed composition hm need not be right that's correct can we say cannot be because the feed has to be above that particular pinch plate yeah so let's let's see okay now when i'm talking about the intersection all these points are satisfying the equilibrium constraint right phase equilibrium okay this is your feed plate okay this is your column this is your feed plate your feed going in right and you have this right and when i plot these points on a triangular diagram all these points are what they are the compositions of the stream leaving any stage now when there is an intersection there is an intersection okay i am going from stripping section i am going from stripping section and then i am switching over to rectifying section right from at this point i am switching over to rectifying section right okay and i am looking at these points now these points are not there is no connection direct connection okay or there is no feed point in this right feed point is independent so when i say i when i talk about this point this is nothing but the composition of the stream leaving the feed plate right the composition of the stream leaving a feed plate and not a feed composition so feed composition would be different and composition of the stream leaving that stage would be different okay so don't be under the impression that this intersection is a feed composition okay it is a composition of the stream stream leaving the feed stage and not a feed composition okay feed composition can be anywhere now in this case the feed composition would be on the line joining these two points why this is xb this is xd and feed composition will be on the line somewhere and not necessarily the intersection right i hope it is clear okay now there is something else i am going to define which has special significance in ternary systems or a multi component system there is something called as saddle okay there is something called as saddle you realize that when you actually plot this profiles okay uh, we don't realize that in binary systems okay i told you feed pinch how do you get feed pinch if you want to get feed pinch you have to solve these equations simultaneously which equations i'll repeat okay 
you have rectifying section y a sorry sorry <laughs> okay rectifying section okay component a right component b right then equilibrium equations phase equilibrium equations y a is equal to alpha a x a divided by 1 sorry sigma alpha i x i right multi component system okay then for y b alpha b x b okay and then summation equations right sigma y i is equal to 1 sigma x i is equal to 1 right so all these equations for a ternary system if i solve them together okay i get feed pinch right i get feed pinch clear I get feed pinch if I solve all these equations together. But then look at the nature of these equations. They are linear equations or non-linear equations. What are what am I solving them for? I'm solving them for y a, x a, y b, x b, y c, x c, right? six equations six unknowns so if you look at these variables in the equations they are these equations are non linear equations okay these equations are non linear equations look at this equation this is non linear equation what do you mean by non linear equation y is equal to mx plus c linear equation y is equal to mx square plus c is non linear equation right so somewhere you have non linearity okay then we call it as non linear equation and uh, it is a set of non-linear algebraic equations and if you solve these equations together okay it's quite likely that you'll get multiple roots you'll get multiple roots a quadratic equation has two roots right so here also you're going to get multiple roots one of the roots as i told you before is the feed pinch right is the feed pinch where the profile is not able to move okay this is the intersection but there are other routes also possible okay right the feed pinch you get in the ternary diagram in the inside the triangle okay whereas see the feed pinch you get somewhere here right but there is one point on the binary edge also okay on the binary edge where all these equations are satisfied and which is called as saddle okay this point is called as saddle we don't realize that or we don't get such point in binary system in mcathill okay because the dimensionality is less there okay it's a two dimensional system whereas for ternary system since we are increasing number of state variables okay you get multiple roots and there is something called a saddle which is realized now how does this saddle behave and where do we realize this saddle do you every time come across saddle answer is no for example if you solve the equation for the stripping section profile with a point on the binary edge this is your xb this is your xb you start solving equation from the stripping section profile okay you move on in the upward direction like what i told you before okay you will hit a point not exactly you will realize that point will go very close to that point and you see there are so many points here okay the movement is very slow 
the moment is very slow, you will realize okay, I am not able to like you may uh, think that okay, now I got a feed pinch, but it is not correct. You go on solving that equation, right? And after some time, you will go away from that point and then we will follow this particular track and then you will hit the feed pinch. Okay. So, this particular point or rather this particular behavior is realized because you are very close to the saddle. Your saddle is sitting somewhere here and since I am starting with a composition on the binary edge, okay, very close to the binary edge, that means the composition of A, the most volatile component in XB or rather in bottom is very less say 10 raise to minus 13. Okay. I cannot make it 0, then that case becomes a binary system. right? But if I make that composition very very small and I start solving the equation, I will go very close to this saddle and then we will change the course thereafter and you will see the profile like this. So, that is how I will realize this saddle on the composition space Okay, in the composition profile. Actually, as I said here, composition profile does not pass through the saddle, but it approaches okay, saddle very closely and changes its course thereafter. Okay. Something you might have learned stability analysis, right? uh, some points are stable, some roots are stable. What, is, what, what does it mean? When I go on solving the equation, I reach that point and the movement is not possible. Some points are unstable, that means you do not realize them okay. and some points are saddle. Okay you go very close to them and then you change your course thereafter. And if you go into the mathematics of that, then you have to work out the eigenvalues and uh, uh, of the Jacobian and the uh, related equations. Okay. Uh, we are not going to get into that, we are not going to do stability analysis. Okay. We are just going to see the behavior because this point has a special significance. I am going to use this behavior to calculate minimum reflux ratio. Okay. So, what we learned is there is something called a saddle point in ternary system. Okay. So, saddle on the rectif in the rectifying section lies on the binary edge okay. of course for small x d c values right. that means here small x d c value and so the way around for small x b a value okay. your saddle lies on the binary edge again. Okay this particular binary edge. So, you have one saddle here, you have one saddle here right? and this position of the saddle can be used to calculate minimum reflux ratio. Right? I already told you that this is the condition for minimum reflux ratio. Right? Okay. You actually draw the profiles okay, and get to a reflux ratio where they exactly fall on each other or one feed pinch falls on the other other profile okay so that is your minimum reflux ratio but then is this the complete procedure can i use it for four component system yeah i can use it but there also i can do visualization but five component six component it's not possible right because this triangle is going to help me only for ternary system right if you have quaternary system I may have 3D space, I can still visualize with difficulty, little bit difficulty, but I can visualize, right. For 5 component or multi components, it is not possible, right. Okay. So, with this visualization, I can get minimum reflux ratio for a ternary system. See, that is my purpose, okay, getting minimum reflux ratio somehow, right. But then for multi component systems, it is not possible. So, now I am going to convert this concept to some mathematical form, okay, so that I can use it, I can extend this concept to multi component system and that is why I need this presence of saddle, I need to identify the presence of saddle. Okay. So, what do I do? For any given system, okay, now this a certain algorithm, a systematic methodology, okay, I just get this saddle point, right? Okay, I get this saddle point for rectifying section profile. I know the feed pinch for the stripping section profile. I know the feed pinch for the rectifying section profile. Now, suppose I draw a triangle. Now, these are the three points. Okay. Okay, these are the three points. 
if I draw this triangle ok, the area of this triangle area of this triangle would be 0 if you have the minimum reflux ratio right. These three points will be collinear, these three points will be collinear ok. What is this point? This is your feed pinch of the stripping section, this is your feed pinch for the rectifying section and this is your saddle ok. Look at this particular diagram, if you have reflux ratio less than minimum reflux ratio, there will be certain space and this triangle, this triangle has certain area ok, right. But if this point exactly falls on this profile, okay, in that case these three points would be collinear and the area of the triangle would be 0, okay, right. That is the way the profiles would behave, okay. And then if your reflux ratio is greater than minimum reflux ratio, this point will move here, again the triangle will have certain area, okay. Now, the area of triangle is proportional to the determinant. Now what is this determinant? You have two vectors, this is the point, this is E1 and E2. You just get a determinant, okay. That determinant will tell you the area, not exactly the area, but it is proportional to the area. And if you make this determinant equal to 0, that means the area is 0, right. So, if you plot determinant versus reflux ratio, you will get a plot like this. So, you will have positive area if the reflux ratio is less than the minimum reflux ratio, right. You will have negative area, now negative area is a bit tricky word, ok. But then determinant would be negative rather, not area because you are in this particular region, ok, right. Depends on where you put this E1 and E2. If you say E2, E1, then it will be positive anyway. Area is always positive, but determinant will change the sign depending on how you define it. So, it will be negative. Right. So, it will cross this 0 and when the area becomes 0 or determinant becomes 0, your reflux ratio is equal to the minimum reflux ratio. So, that is the general procedure. Now, suppose I have 4 component system, 5 component system, 6 component system. How to extend it? I just change it. Suppose you have 4 component system. Instead of area, what will you have? You will have volume, ok, because there will be another vector. There will be 2 feed pinches, ok, or 2 saddles rather, 2 saddles. Okay. I will I'll have another point and I will have volume here, right. So, you will have determinant E1, E2, E3, there are 3 vectors, right. And suppose you have 5 component system, you will have 4 vectors, 5 vectors, but the calculation of determinant is not difficult, right. Okay. Here it is 2 by 2 determinant, then it will be 3 by 3, then it will be 4 by 4 depending on number of components you have. You just calculate the magnitude of determinant and plot it against reflux ratio and you will get a minimum reflux ratio. So, I have extended the concept to a multi component system, right. I, I, I think we can take a break at this moment, ok. And later on we will see how to uh, do the design of distillation column based on minimum reflux ratio.